Hi, and welcome back. This is the second part of my uh, collision mesh tutorial for uh, Fallout to Blender and Blender to Fallout, basically. <laughs> Not sure what to call it yet. But uh, anyway, um, we're going to talk about how to create collision meshes today. And this is my wine glass that I've created. Um, it's an older mesh, and I could probably clean up the lighting and add some sharp edges and things, but for today it'll suffice. It'll just have to do for our example. Um, the centering is also probably off. Uh, that's something that I may talk about in a further tutorial down the road. And you can actually go in and, and realign that um, because the mass, most of the weight may be going shifting up here in this general area rather than in the middle where this is. Uh, or it may be down here. I'm not exactly sure where the better position is. It just depends on, on how it reacts in game and how it topples over and things like that. Um, I, I haven't played with it in game in a long time for this particular mesh. So um, I've done other meshes, but I haven't done a lot of clutter and objects yet for it. Uh, the last time I worked on clutter and objects was about eight, six months to a year ago. So. Uh, and, and as of yet, I don't have a build of my mod that will allow me to go in and change that. So today we're just going to focus in on creation of um, collision meshes. And I'll probably do another one later on centering, okay? And setting up your center of mass and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. Um, so, and that's something you guys can kind of figure out on your own anyway. That's, that's something that you kind of have to toy with, so... All right, so this is our wine glass, and to be honest, it probably should be called wine glass down here, as well as we might want to capitalize that for fun in the object portion of our editor, editing window. And then um, hit, um, go ahead and hit tab, and that will take you into editing mode. Um, and then, or like, where we were before we were actually we can select objects and then if you do this you can select stuff for editing without actually going into this editing window this is actually somewhat independent of that okay so if you go under mesh now and then scripts make sure that you're you have this editing select you can you have it selected for editing by tabbing into that you go into scripts and then you go into hull and you use the hull script now when you click on whole script, it's going to come up with this, this little menu that says box, sphere, or convex. Now as I've discussed uh, in the previous tutorial, boxes are used for, I would only use it for something very, very generic that you don't really need to deal with a lot because you know you, you don't want people bumping into the box, you don't want, you know, you, you want to have some detail to it, but if I were making a pipe or a light on a wall or something, I might use a box for that. Spheres, yeah, I haven't really found a huge use for them. I don't use them a whole lot. When you do this, when you use this method, it'll actually conform to the shape itself. So it's kind of nice sometimes, um, you know, for collision meshes. It's it's quite a nice method is you know using the script, but not entirely accurate. Um, convex is great for convex shapes. If it you see how this indents down here. A convex mesh probably would not be the best choice for this because convexes do not do indentations like that. Um, they don't do much, de they don't handle detail. Um, and from what I understand, they're pretty good, but you would use them more for things that are static. You wouldn't use them as much for things that are considered clutter and setting around so you would probably use a tri mesh for clutter and that and convex for static meshes that you're just going to hang on a wall okay but we'll go ahead and create a whole mesh and then we'll go convex just to give you guys this um to give you guys an example and in fact you know what precision with precision i usually use it leave it on default settings you may want to move it up a little bit higher um if you're doing a, a convex hull I'm going to move it up to two because I want to give you guys use this as an example later. And if you notice, 
I click OK, nothing happens because um, I guess precision was a little bit too high and when you do that it just you don't get anything for some reason and but it is in fact in the scene but um, you just basically can't see it which is kind of strange so we're gonna go ahead and go back into editing mode and we'll go back up to scripts go into hull convex and then I'm just gonna go with the default precision and if you notice it's created this nice little convex if we tap out of that, you'll notice that it is create and select the, this new mesh that it created. This is a convex uh, collision mesh, and it's very simple, triangulated. It doesn't do these little indentations in the center, um, which is kind of annoying. So you may want to, I mean, for, for this particular mesh, it might actually be okay because you're not going to have, I mean, if a bullet were to hit this, little bar in the middle it would more than likely break it but where we're just tipping it over it really doesn't matter but I do like to have a little more precision in my meshes okay so in this case convex mesh is not the best and if we go ahead and grab this you'll notice it's not parented yet we will do all of that ourselves in a moment um, but convex message meshes are great for anything static that you're going to sit in a room and it's just going to sit there. But things that you interact with, that you bump into, that you collide with, you're not going to want to do that. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and delete that. Now, the next method is to actually take this and create your own mesh. Now, for the sake of shortening this tutorial because of YouTube's wonderful length limits, I've created my own mesh. And I'm going to, I'm unhiding that now. And as you see, um, you can see this is a pretty generic mesh. I just did an outline of it, of the model that I had. Um, and you can, you can even take the model, take the base, and just duplicate it, separate it from that model, and then uh, do some extrusions until you have the shape you want. That'll work too, but I tried to make it as generic as I could. I could probably actually take some detail out of this, to be honest and probably should in fact. Um, so the first thing I would do with this is I would take this and I would, and if you notice too, if I grab this, it's not parented, okay, once again. And if I go down here, I'm gonna rename this to Collision, just so I can recognize the name. You can name it to anything you want, but I like to stick with names that I know, okay? And you don't need to add any UVs, you don't need to add any textures to this, you just make the mesh, it, all it does is detects collision. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into object mode and then we're going to, um, and with this collision mesh selected, we're going to go and set it for bounds and then we want to set it for wireframe under draw because we want it to draw the wireframe only. We don't want to see that mesh overlaying our other mesh because then we can't see it. Okay, and um, this is just the best way to handle that. You don't want your your mesh so showing up, and in fact, if you leave bounds and wire off and you export it that way, it will show up exactly as so, and you don't want that to happen. So set it for wireform and bounds, okay? Wireframe and bounds. And then the next thing we will do is we will give it the logic that we want. So go under your logic panel and first of all you're going to want to click on the bounds button and select where it says triangle mesh or collision bounds whatever it would default to and notice how we have triangle mesh, convex hole, cone, cylinder, sphere, and box. These are all different kinds of collision meshes and in this case we are doing a triangle mesh because we have indentations that I talked about earlier. Um, and you want to select that and then you'll want to add a property to it and in this property I, where it says float select that go to string and then we're going to set up the havoc data now for this we're going to go and just type in havoc material and h-a-v-o-k and then material attached to each other and then you go over into this the into the um, area next to it to select it and then we're going to type in have matte glass okay 
Now, in a previous tutorial, I showed you guys, I believe, how to go into half, uh, how to look at the collision meshes and, and take a look at the half matte glass and your different Havoc materials, okay? And this is where you actually set them up. So this is something you're gonna wanna do. Um, and this will tell it what kind of, how it, how it interacts, what kind of sounds to play and what to do, and that it's a glass material, okay? If you set it for metal or something else, it will be a little bit different, okay? So the next thing we'll wanna do is we'll wanna select now that we have our property set, you want to select the collision mesh and then select your uh, mesh itself, the wine glass, and then you hit Control P and you make that parent, okay? And now notice that when you grab this, collision mesh moves around with it, grab the collision mesh, you'll see that little line that we discussed earlier. Now you can clear the origin and remove that parenting, or you can clear it um, you can actually go in and, and um, remove the parenting altogether, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea, okay? And what you want to do now is select both and then hit Control A to scale, to apply scale and rotation. Note that scale, apply scale and rotation and a lot of these things will be different if you're using 2.5. This is why I suggest using 2.4 for now until everything is implemented correctly, okay? So go ahead and select that. What that does is it will apply your scale and rotation and so that it stays there. And because if you have things set differently and you don't have that applied, then, and you mess up um, your data, then when you Im export it, you will have things sitting out in some weird area, random direction that uh, you don't want it in and, and things won't be where they should be. So you wanna make sure and, and set that data uh, so that it pretty much stays where you want it and in the location that you want it in and the rotation that you want it in, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this bar down here, right click and you'll see a little menu and it's, it allows you to split the window. Now I'm going to split this particular window right in the middle and I'm gonna go down here to where this little grid thing is and it will show you, you can change what kind of window you're in. You're gonna wanna go into your outliner. now. In your outliner, you're going to notice I have wine glass, and then I have something called convex poly. Well, that is our hole that we created earlier, and this is why I created the mistake, is because, as you can see when I select it, you can't see anything. It's not really there, but it is in the scene, and when you're going through and you're exporting things, you want to make sure to clean your mesh inside of the outliner, here in the outliner mode. Um, so select that, hit control, or hit delete, actually right click it and then delete it. Make sure that there are never any extra skeletons, bones, armatures, anything in your scene, cameras, uh, lights, anything, get rid of them all, anything you do not want to export, make sure that it's gone, okay? And now we just have our wine glass and if you expand this out you can see the parent child relationship this is the mesh data here and if you expand that out you'll see materials and then under that you'll see textures and then under that you'll actually see where it leads back to the whatever directory that that texture is in even though it's just set for the texture itself right now and under collision if you select that you'll see your collision mesh and your collision data and you can select that okay so make sure that that's pretty much what is in your scene when you send it out so anyway, with that, um, we have created our collision tutorial. So hopefully this helps you guys out and thanks for watching.